This video starts from the premise that the current system that we're in is headed for a total collapse. I've made other videos establishing this tenet pretty thoroughly, so rather than repeat myself, I'm going to tackle the big question that many are wrestling with right now. How do we rebuild after the collapse in a way that avoids the mistakes that got us into this mess in the first place? Now there's some groups, the Zeitgeist Movement in particular, which have asserted that since the problems we face are global, the solution needs to be global. I strongly believe that this is erroneous and dangerous. Um, but rather than giving an emotional knee-jerk reaction to the idea, which is actually my instinctual reaction, I'm going to frame the debate in terms of efficiency. Now, human societies, once working, are in many ways similar to machines. There are mechanisms which are put into place to handle known problems, and how well that machine or that society functions is largely dependent on the blueprints that spawned it. That being the case, I'm going to use the analogy of an electronic device to illustrate why a coexisting strategies approach is more effective than a global approach. Say you live in a world where computers haven't been invented yet, and you set out to design a device that can be used to send emails, to listen to music, watch videos, to write articles, etc. What would happen if you started from scratch and tried to drop the perfect blueprint for such a device that would fit every single person's computing needs all over the planet? If you really think about it, it should be obvious that you would spend a long time at the drawing board, and when you were done, a lot of people would look at your design and say, no, I don't want a computer that works like that. Some people, like myself, prefer laptops even if they're slightly less powerful because mobility is a priority. Others need systems with multiple hard drives and dual monitors and are willing to sacrifice mobility. And then there's of course the questions of keyboard design, number of USB ports, and operating systems. Not everybody needs or wants the same thing. Now if you look at the way computers actually did evolve, they came into being out of competing strategies, which is not exactly the same as coexisting strategies. The primary difference being that information and resources were not freely shared between companies to speed up innovation. Nonetheless, over time, people tried the computers that were on the market, and the best innovations ended up being applied to virtually all brands. However, the need for different approaches for different users remained, and even to this day, there's a wide variety of computer types, all sharing technological concepts that work. Now, if you think of this in terms of human societies, right now we have a short period of time before the collapse where we can share ideas about how to best rebuild. You can think of this as R&D research and development. Rather than taking a competing strategies approach, we should take a coexisting strategies approach, even at this stage, sharing ideas, discussing principles, drawing up designs. However, we should do this with the understanding that when the hammer actually falls, it's going to be up to each community to rebuild in the way that best fits their situation. If that spirit of shared innovation can be maintained across community boundaries, the rate of advancement could be greatly accelerated. One community trying an approach that may seem illogical to the rest may find a solution that would eventually be adopted by others once it's proven to work. Likewise, mistakes that are made in individual groups would not necessarily spell the failure of all the others. This model that I'm describing is based on the principles of ecosystems and natural evolution. Ecosystems naturally develop into communities of life that work while maintaining diversity. Biological systems, economic systems, and societal systems all share several key points in common. One, they work best when adapted to the specific region where they are located. Two, they work best when no one system takes over all the other surrounding systems. And three, they work best when there are open, non-destructive exchanges between parallel systems. Taking such an approach with human societies is not only logical, it's really the only approach that would work. There are some people who want to structure their society according to religious norms. There are other groups that would prefer to eliminate religion from their society altogether. And there's other groups that don't really even care. Each of these groups would be best served by allowing them to try their principles on a small scale. The Amish people are a good example of this. They have a system that works for them, and they should never be forced to change. In my opinion, the concept of coexisting strategies is the most important foundational principle moving forward. Some might consider the non-aggression principle to be the most important. However, I would assert that the non-aggression principle is impossible without the understanding that others may not want to live the same way that you do. I look forward to hearing your thoughts on the matter, and any and all video responses will be accepted.